Sports. We are Tonight, we put a wrap around this Braves National Series in Atlanta. In game one, the Braves frustrated Steven Strasburg, and Atlanta got a 3-2 win. Tuesday night, it was Tim Hudson's night, his 200th win, and his third career homer highlighted the Braves' 8-1 final score. But last night, Jordan Zimmerman dominated the Braves for eight innings as the Nationals beat Atlanta for the first time this year, 2-0 the final. Tonight, Chris Medlin takes the ball and tries to give the Braves a series win. The Nats and Braves wrap up our four-game set on Sports South next. From beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Braves baseball. The crowd filing in here at Turner Field for the finale of our four-game series between the Washington Nationals and your Atlanta Braves. And this four-game series has been brought to you by the Home Depot. Hi again, friends. With Joe Simpson, Tom Glavin, I'm Chip Carey. The Braves have won two of the first three ball games, and hopefully they can win this series outright against their arch rivals from the East. The Braves wrapped up a spectacular month of April and celebrated in style today with a couple of big awards this afternoon, Joe. Well deserved by both guys. Uh, two guys got players of the month for the Atlanta Braves. First of all, Justin Upton was named the National League Player of the Month. All he did was lead the National League in home runs and slugging and extra base hits virtually carried the team through the month of April. And how about Evan Gaddis, seen here homering on, in his first game in a Braves uniform. That led to a great April for him, where he was named the Rookie of the Month in the National League. He led all rookies in home runs, RBIs, and slugging. Congratulations to both of them. Well deserved. And Tom Glavin, two pitchers going for their respective ball clubs, hoping for an award-winning performance. And both Dan Heron and Chris Medlin want to turn things around tonight. Yeah, they do. For, for Washington, Dan Heron, look, this guy over the course of his career has been an innings eater. Had a hard, he's had a hard time so far early this year doing that for the Nationals. Pitched a, a good ball game his last time out, picking up a win, so look for him to try and continue that. And for Chris Mellon, look, let's forget what his numbers were last year. They were off the charts good. He's off to a decent start this year. He just hasn't been able to win the ball game. Tough start his last time out against Detroit, but that aside, he's pitched well enough to win a lot more than one game this year. So I think he's going to go out there tonight, try and continue to give his team the opportunity, and quite honestly hope he just gets a little bit better luck when it comes to the wins and the losses. The Braves have a three-and-a-half game lead in the Eastern Division race, and when we come back from break, Tom Hart will break down what's happening amongst the other clubs in this rough-and-tumble division. The Mets are in town next. Tom will tell you what's happening with them as well when we return to Atlanta in a moment.
from the East. Hey, everybody, the Braves continue to dominate in the National League East. One big reason, they're the only team in the division with a winning record, and they've won 10 out of 12 against their division foes. Take a look inside the standings. Everybody else is struggling. Why? we a myriad of reasons. In fact, in Philadelphia and Miami, it's the injury bug that has had both of these teams down and down early. For Giancarlo Stanton, looked like he was off the snide. Three home runs over the weekend against the Cubs. Then a grade two hamstring strain. We'll have him likely out until June, at least three weeks. For Philadelphia, they've been outscored the last two games, 20-2 to two to the Indians. Roy Holiday got touched for eight runs in just three and two-thirds innings, prompting Cliff Lee to say last night, we've got to have more pride than this. Only bright spot in the big city is their rookie, Matt Harvey, the product of the University of North Carolina, has been sensational. More strikeouts and innings pitched this year. He is undefeated, and he's got folks in the Mets' offices comparing him with a straight face. The Hall of Famer Tom Seaver will see Harvey in the Mets this weekend. Specifically, that big, strong right-hander will go on Sunday. But before we get there, the Braves need to dispatch the Nats. They win a win tonight for a series victory. It's Chris Medlin that's to get back on the winning track and return to 2012 Waves. It's the Braves and Nats. Chip, Joe, and Tom have the call and all the action when we return. by Delta Airlines and by Ford. Cool breezy night again tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, as we wrap things up with the Washington Nationals. Braves try to rebound from a 2-0 victory by Jordan Zimmerman last night. Boy, was he good for the Nationals ball club. And we'll see what Atlanta can do with Dan Heron, the opposing starting pitcher tonight. Big question for the Nationals was who would fill out their starting nine. Lots of questions about Bryce Harper and Jason Wirth, they were put in the lineup about an hour ago by Davey Johnson. And so the Toyota starting lineup for the Nationals will take aim at Chris Medlin, who tries to break in the win column himself tonight. Yeah, Chris, one and three on the year, looking to rebound from a tough start his last time out in Detroit. And you'd figure he's in the right place with the right team. Last nine starts in Atlanta, four and one with a 1.34 ERA. And in his last 17 innings pitched against the Nats, he's allowed one earned run. His four keys to pitching success tonight, something he worked hard on in the bullpen in his side sessions with Roger McDowell, is this two-seam fastball that he likes to run back over the inside corner to left-handed batters. They think they have that corrected. Also, no elevation. Well, he's been trying to go up in the strike zone, actually out of the strike zone when he gets ahead in the count, 0-2, 1-2. That hasn't been working very well. Might need to uh, 
rethink that one unless he worked on it some in his side session also. As I mentioned, it's a cool, breezy night in Atlanta. Right now, listed at 60 degrees, it is humid, and the wind is gusting out of the east at up to 16, maybe even 20 miles an hour. Old Glory is starched atop the jumbo scoreboard in straightaway center field here in Atlanta. It's blowing straight in our face, and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm with you. I don't like it either. Our pitchers love to win the wind blew straight in as Medlin goes to work and fires low to Denard Span. Didn't get the outside corner. It's ball two. Span three hits in the series has not scored a run for the Nationals in their last 13 games. And Medlin's promptly missed with three straight to start the game. That one good enough for Mark Wegner, who's got the plate tonight. Three balls and a strike. That's ripped past Freddie Freeman and into the right field corner. Big turnaround first. Jordan Schaefer's throw is going to be cut off, and Denard Span doubles to start the night for the Nationals. That might have been an attempt on the two seamer, and it just stayed in the middle of the plate. Yeah. It, uh... Certainly didn't move the way the first couple pitches he threw did, and, and that might be a product too as well of not wanting to walk a guy. Hold right. on a little bit longer and yep. throw it down the middle. So Steve Lombardozzi bats now. He's the national second baseman tonight. Danny Espinosa has been ice cold at the plate. So Lombardozzi back to back starts in the series. And he pushes a punt down the third base line. It's on the chalk and then rolls foul. It's Johnson. With the play, strike one. Here's the rest of the Braves lineup defensively tonight. Upton, Upton, and Jordan Schaefer. Left to right in the outfield. Chris Johnson and Freddie Freeman on the corners. Andrelton Simmons and Dan Ugla up the middle. And rookie of the month, Evan Gaddis, is behind the plate. Lombardozzi grounded out four times last night. Three times to the left side. So this situation ought to be pretty good for him to hit the ball on the ground, maybe pull it and get him over. That one all the way past Gaddis into the screen. Now, no need to bunt. Span to third on a wild pitch. Breaking ball that he overcooked. Started inside and went to the screen because it went more inside. And a base hit to left field puts Washington in front. Lombardozzi's fourth RBI span scores. And Dan Heron has a first inning lead. We have earlier in the series, they're, they're 11 and 1 when they score first, mm -hmm. 12 and 1 now, since they were the only ones to score last night. That broke a long streak for Span, too. That, what, 13 games he hadn't scored a run in? Took care of that with a leadoff double. Took third on the wild pitch and scores on the hit. Now here's Bryce Harper. And he unloads on the very first pitch and drives it to right. But Jordan Schaefer is going to have room. He makes the play. Lombardozzi fakes a tag and holds it first. Everybody in Nationals country was very worried after the game last night. Bryce Harper on Tuesday couldn't corral Tim Hudson's home run ball. He slammed into the fence, hurt his left side, and then came up gimpy late last night. On a check swing. But both Harper and Jason Worth back in the lineup. 
for Davey Johnson tonight, and they're certainly going to keep an eye on both. Worth was battling a hamstring problem and also had trouble with an Eric O'Flaherty pitch that he fouled right off his, it was his calf, his left ankle, his ankle bone. It was his ankle bone. Which was causing him a whole lot more grief than the hamstring. Q shot in front of the mound. Medlin will take care of Worth. Lombardozzi to second with two outs. That'll bring up the shortstop Ian Desmond. He had the decisive blow last night. First time in Desmond's career he batted cleanup. And cleanup he did. A two run fourth inning homer. Counted for all the Washington offense. First couple of innings have been hard on Chris Medlin so far this year. First inning ERA a lot higher than he's accustomed to. And he's one through three, 4.80 ERA, and I should say most of that damage is in the second inning. Opponents hitting 364 in the second inning. Six earned runs in that inning alone. Letter high strike, and Desmond took that 0 and 2. Desmond became the first player in Nationals history to homer in his first career start as a cleanup hitter. He can hit anywhere in the lineup. And he rides an eight game hitting streak tonight. And he hooked that one off the plate. One ball, two strikes. That ball that Harper hit was hit pretty well. But you wouldn't expect anything hit toward the Braves bullpen to go anywhere tonight. The way the wind's blowing. No, you're going to really have to. Catch something to try and turn that win around over there tonight. Strike three right down the middle, and Desmond was caught looking. Medlin gives up back to back hits to start the game, and the Nationals' first run. Now his offense goes to work against Dan Aaron. Yet even here in the bottom half of the first inning. Atlanta comes in at 17 and 10. And manager Freddy Gonzalez presents this Toyota starting lineup with Jordan Schaefer, Chris Johnson, and Justin Upton. First, second, and third. Big honor for Justin today, as we told you. Freddie Freeman, the cleanup man, Evan Gaddis, Dan Ugla, BJ Upton, Andrelton Simmons, and Medlin face Dan Heron. Right hander Dan Heron. He is two and three on the year. Off to a slow start. Like I said, he pitched a good ball game his last time out, but 
You see there why the Nationals signed him. Career 11 seasons, 121 wins, three-time All-Star. Eight seasons of 12-plus wins, so although he's off to a slow start here, he's a pretty good pickup for them for the back end of their rotation and, and look for him to get things turned around. His keys tonight around the corners. He can't pitch to the middle of the plate, and he's very good at working the corners. And you're going to add timing to this because he's very deceiving in his windup with that pause. Mm -hmm. He can really throw a hitter's timing off. 88 to 90 with his fastball, but then he throws a cutter and a split finger pitch off that. Jordan Schaefer grounds to second. And with two pitches, Heron has his first out tonight. Washington's defense has had its share of troubles this year. 24 errors in their first 28 games. Harper Spann and Worth, though, very athletic in the outfield. Desmond and Lombardozzi, the double play tandem. Rendon and LaRoche in the corners. Wilson Ramos behind the plate. They're going to get Ryan Zimmerman back tomorrow when the Nationals open up a series with the Pittsburgh Pirates at PNC Park. Chris Johnson hits with the bases empty. A 369 average for Chris. His work against Washington is our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot. Good work the last 16, 10 for 23 already this year. Three pitches retires Johnson, two up, two down. This guy's not a big strikeout guy, but he's also not a walks guy. He does not put guys on base. He's, he's going to be all around the strike zone, like I said, not walking. Not walking anybody. His career walk to strikeout ratio, third best in Major League history. So he's going to make you earn your way on. I'm really hoping that's the AT&T trivia question. I think we've got it nailed. Oh, doggone it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Pretty good company there. Justin Upton. Began his season as a brave in fantastic fashion. The April player of the month in the National League. His second player of the month honor. He won it in 2009 once while with the Diamondbacks. And he's quickly behind the count. No balls, two strikes. You mentioned he's an innings eater. Talking about Aaron Tommy. He had seven straight years of 200 or more innings pitched until last year and only 176 last year. And he just struck out Johnson and Upton back to back and works a 1 2 3 bottom of the first inning. Heron and the Nationals lead in game four, 1 0 after one inning.
We head to the second inning where Adam LaRoche goes to work for Washington. The Nationals first baseman. Broke an 0 for 26 slide with a single in the series, but overall one hit in his last 37 at bats. And his average at 129 for the year. Fly ball well hit toward right. Jordan Schaefer going back. Turns. That ball is off the fence. LaRoche on his way to second. Schaefer's throw is a little late. What a strong throw, though. As LaRoche missed a solo home run by a couple of feet. Two leadoff doubles in as many innings for Washington. Any other night that's in the bullpen. The wind blowing straight in from that direction though held this one up. Good throw by Jordan to make it close. Yeah, he played that perfectly. So Anthony Rendon getting the start at third base for Washington. And he takes a strike over the inside corner. It's where you can make some points with your manager, knowing that Brian Zimmerman's going to come back tomorrow and you're probably the odd man out. But before you go, I'm sure that Davy Johnson knows that Rendon knows how to play the game. It's a matter of him showing that he can execute when he's supposed to get a guy over. Gaddis smothered that one ball, two strikes. And when your club isn't scoring many runs and the Nationals aren't of late, plays like the one Joe mentioned are hugely important. The Nationals. Scoring just over two runs a game in their last 11 played. They lead 1 0 early tonight. And Rendon does a nice job with a 1 2 pitch, drives it into right field, and the Nationals have runners at first and third, and nobody out. Good job of hitting behind in the count by Rendon. And I'm going to guess that Trent Jewett held LaRoche up. At third base, only because he saw how strong the throw was from Jordan Schaefer on the ball off the wall. Adam wasn't bolting. He wanted to make sure the ball got down, but by getting it in quickly, too, Schaefer holds him at third. Now, Washington's catcher, Wilson Ramos, hits. He's driven in four runs this year. Ramos was activated from the DL during this series. Had some hamstring problems. And Medlin misses low. Ball one. 23 at bats for Ramos this year. Has yet to hit into a double play. Well, be a good time for the first one. Foul down the first base line and the count even one and one. This is a really big swing game for Washington. They lost the first two. Things did not look so good, but they could actually win tonight and leave town having not lost any ground, not gained any, but holding their own. If the Braves win, it is a two game swing that would have padded two games to the lead for Atlanta. Ramos didn't mean to, now a ball and two strikes. Yeah, I think they'll psychologically feel pretty good about themselves as they come out of here with a split with uh, with the way things started and Jason Worth missing some time and I'm worried about Bryce Harper. So, yeah, I think they would uh, they would take that right now and get on their plane. Back on the play foul. Rondo is still alive at one and two. Well, they will leave town either two and a half or four and a half back. And they're on, a, on the road a lot over the next three weeks. 19 of the next 29 games for the Nationals are away from Nationals Park. Washington is five and seven so far this year away from home.
One ball, two strikes to Ramos. Runners at the corners. And a comebacker. Medlin's got LaRoche in a rundown. And flips to Johnson in time to retire Adam LaRoche for the first out. That worked out just fine. He was willing to go to second base for the double play, but when LaRoche wandered too far off, then why give him a run? So Rendon stops at second. Ramos is at first. You got the pitcher up and Dan Heron. You're one ground ball away from getting out of this thing with no more runs across. What do you think this meeting's about? Uh, I think it's most likely, unless something happened with Medlin that we're not aware of, but I think most likely this is about bunt coverage, what we're going to try and do if he, if he is bunting, and being on the same page in terms, in terms of how they want to attack him. Not a bad hitter. Heron's two for ten with a double. And real good overall for his career, as you see. Braves are in at the corners with one out for Heron. Washington leads by one. They have four hits. He showed punt, pulled the bat back, and Freddie Freeman slammed on the brakes, charging in from first. You can still do that, but you can't fake to third and throw to first anymore. I never like a third or first move anyway. It's kind of hard for you to do. Yeah. Lefties can't do it, and nobody should be able to do it. <laughs> a one pitch. Aaron gets the bunt down. Johnson will have one play, and he makes it to first. First sacrifice of the season for Dan Heron. Runners at second and third for Denard Spann and two outs. Walking this guy, if not intentionally, kind of unintentionally. Such a good contact hitter, tough to strike out, and fast. Chris fell behind Span, three balls, no strikes in the first inning. Denard then doubled, and he squibs this one past Johnson and down the left field line, and that's going to score two runs. Denard Span has two doubles in as many trips, and Washington leads 3 0. That's ruled an error. So, not a double. Some more tough luck for Chris Medlin. Chris Johnson just didn't quite get in front of it, didn't have the glove down. Well, you're right. I mean, that's those are the kinds of things that didn't happen an awful lot to Chris last year. So you know, now you got to try and pick Johnson up and get your offense a chance to get back in and get some runs, not not let them dig too deep a hole. Chris's second error of the year. The Braves have made 16 of them and until this second inning allowed just two unearned runs all year. Dan Heron helped himself by moving two runners into scoring position and that allowed two to score there.
Pop fly foul over the Nationals on deck circle. No play for Gaddis. Pedozzi another one two pitch. Two balls, two strikes, 34 pitches from Edlin so far tonight. There's that fastball they try to elevate. Didn't chase it, see if he goes back to the changeup down and away. Popped up, Chris gives chase over near the stands. That's in the seats. I think that's part of the reason why he. Tries to use that elevated fastball as well as maybe you take a shot and maybe he's going to swing at it. But sometimes you're thinking a pitch ahead that if you know you want to get him out with your changeup, you go with that high fastball, change his eyesight a little bit, and then go back to that changeup. He spoiled a pretty good one right there. High pop, shallow left. Justin comes in, is under, and has it. Matt retires the side. And our span has been a pest early for the Nationals. His ground ball brings in a pair of runs and makes it three nothing with the Hartley order coming up to the Braves in the second inning. Baseball is brought to you in part by the Georgia Lottery, by the Home Depot, and by Toyota. Nationals three, Braves nothing. Bottom of the second inning, Freddie Freeman. Evan Gaddis and Dan Ugla are coming up against Dan Heron. Heron has not pitched well on the road, has a high ERA, 6.29. Let's see if Atlanta can get something going after. A one, two, three, bottom of the first. You know, my feeling though about a guy like this, when he has a lead, popped up. Denard Span is under in right center, makes the play, four up, four down. Versus a guy that's struggling and you get on him early and you get a couple, three runs, all of a sudden he, he might fall into a, and oh man, here I go again, or where do I go to try to trick these guys? When you have a guy with this kind of experience who knows how to pitch and you give him a three run lead early, he can dazzle you. That's what concerns you that he can just all of a sudden make a mistake or two and it doesn't hurt him that much. Rookie of the month, Evan Gaddis stands in. Six homers, 16 RBIs. And he swings the first ball and skies that into right center field. Span covers a lot of turf, makes the catch. Two up, two down.
Five outs on 11 pitches so far for Dan Heron. And here's Uglo. Talked about Dan's and BJ Upton's struggles earlier tonight. And two hits in his last 11 at bats. Ball toward Rendon at third. He gloves, he grabs, he guns, and he gets his man. And Heron very efficient. Six outs, 13 pitches, and a 3 0 lead after two. Now for our Home Depot tools from the dugout. See how we do that? Home Depot tools from the dugout. And we're talking about Braves defense, specifically the big security blanket over at first that is Freddie Freeman. And having Freddie over there is, is huge for our infield because, you know, all you got to do is get it in the vicinity and, and he's going to make a play. You know, if, if you make a bad throw, he, he picks you up and, and makes a tag or picks the ball. Um, it's just it's really comforting having him over there. And, and Freeman's already come up with some big defensive plays in this series, starting a would-be double play with great range at first, and that super stretch and a fine play from Andrelton Simmons led to another out. Good scoop, great hands, and he also took one away from Bryce Harper towards the end of the game last night as Harper leads off. Chip? So Arthur Blank certainly appreciated that. Home Depot tools from the dugout as he's with us tonight at Turner Field. Congratulations to Mr. Blank and the Falcons organization on there. Another first pitch swing for Bryce Harper. On their work to get the new stadium for the Falcons. That's great. I, I heard something about vibrating seats possibility. So that, well, I didn't think that was so special because even though it's not hooked up to any apparatus, Chance got a vibrating seat over here three or four times a game. <laughs> Yes, he does. So it's not really that much of a novelty. There must be piggybacking on the whole vibrating controllers for the video games. I think it's supposed to be like if somebody really puts a good hit on somebody. Yeah, that there's a simulation for that. Is that's that what, what the controllers are now. When you play it? football, you hit somebody, you get the big vibration, or when you're playing. Baseball and you hit a big home run, you get that you get the big vibration. So okay. probably piggybacking on that. Back to Freddie Freeman and his defense yet with all the stat or all the stats they have in baseball now. Have they figured out a way to quantify how many runs a guy saves you on defense? I wish they with all the other stuff they do, they should. Yeah, they should. Because I gotta imagine there's not too many first basemen in baseball that are Saving their team's runs the way that guy does. Three balls, no strikes for Jason Worth. And that's called over the inside corner. It's three and one. I read a rating on Freddie in the offseason about his defense, and it was, I think it's something like 
average at best or something like that. And I thought somebody's just going by errors. They don't see him play on a nightly basis, of course, like we do. But if anybody did or if they had any clue, they'd know that he was way above average. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe run saved is not the best metric. How many outs is saved? Think about balls in the dirt with the bases right. empty and the pitches that are saved for the starting pitcher or his relief pitcher. As Medlin makes a good delivery to take care of Jason Worth for the second out of his third inning. And they clear for Ian Desmond. Fans, the Braves game used store at Turner Field has authenticated game used baseballs, bases, jerseys, bats, collectors, items, and a whole lot more. Stop by the Braves game used store at your next Braves game located on the terrace level near the chop house. Desmond inside outs that ball down the right field line. And he'll make his way to second base. A two out double. They've been going after Medlin early in the count. Right off the end of the bat. See, and that's another one of those that you look at and you say, well, you know, that's kind of a bad break, and it is, but it, it gets back to what. Chris has been struggling with a little bit if that sinker finishes down. He's not going to be able to hit that ball over there like that. He's probably going to hit a ground ball to first base instead. We talked about the mechanical work that Chris and Roger McDowell did in his side session before tonight's start. How long does that stuff take to really take in in game conditions Tom? It can take a while because you can feel really good about it out there in the bullpen. You carry that mentality with you into the game and then the minute things start happening you abandon it and you know so it's hard to stick with it and, and continue to think about those adjustments. You know now again I know at times when I struggled yeah you'd have some of that but Eventually you just honestly you got to get to the point. I don't care if it's pitching or hitting you got to get to the point where when you walk across those lines. You're just trying to compete and you're not thinking about mechanics. You're just trying to do the best you can to to repeat and make pitches or repeat and make good swings. And to your point I think when you get uh, you feel real good about it until all of a sudden you're in a situation like this with a guy in scoring position. And you think you know what I'm not comfortable with that just yet. And I don't want to make a mm -hmm. mistake with that. I better go to something else. Yeah, you do. I mean, you start to second guess yourself a little bit. You don't trust yourself as much. It's the outside corner. Three balls and a strike. Broke around the plate. Roche takes a walk. So Rendon is next. He singled and scored on Denard Spann's ground ball to third base that was ruled an error. Tom, you made a point uh, at the beginning of the game about how successful Chris was last season and how he was off the charts and how we as, a, as fans have to kind of throw that out and not have such high expectations. Is the same true of him? Does he have? Everybody has high expectations of himself. They want to do well, but is he trying to do more than he thinks? You know, I, I don't know that it's. I think that there's. Yes, there's going to be a part of him that realistically somewhere is thinking, all right, well, things aren't. There's no way things can go as good as they did last year all the time. But at the same time, you know, there is a an expectation out there of that he created. So it's hard at the same time to ignore well, the chatter you're starting to hear around town or in the newspaper or on the radio stations. Oh, Medlin struggling, Medlin struggling, Medlin struggling. You start to hear that, and you start to pitch to try and make that go away sometimes. And you know it can be tough psychologically. Fly ball toward left. Justin coming on. Did he get there? Yes, a shoestring catch to take away a hit. From Rendon. That saved at least one run. We head to the bottom of the third inning. PJ Upton leads off for the Braves down three.
runs. And here in Atlanta, all season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. B.J. Upton is the Braves' seventh place hitter. And it seems, fellas, like he's been 0 2 all year long. But he may be facing a man that can get him going. Our Ram Trucks power stats. Hopefully, that's just what the doctor ordered for BJ. Popped up. Desmond at short. Makes the one handed grab. Seven up, seven down for Dan Heron. One away. He's doing it on quick counts, too. He was really rolling. This guy's been a 16 game winner twice. He's a three time all star. He really has had a good split finger pitch. That was his real stock and trade. He got a lot of ground balls from it. Get ahead in the count, and then he'd get you to swing at that split. Hit a lot of comebackers. But he's, his wind up is so, from a timing standpoint, messaged up so much. You've really got to be patient. Aaron played college ball at Pepperdine. Was a second round pick by the Cardinals back in 2001. Was traded to Oakland for Mark Mulder in 2004. As Simmons rolls toward third, Rendon makes the peg to first in time for two outs. Then Heron went to Arizona for Brett Anderson, Chris Carter, Aaron Cunningham, Danny Evelyn, Carlos Gonzalez, and Greg Smith in 2007. How about that blockbuster? Then to the Angels for Joe Saunders, and then as Joe and Tom mentioned, a one year free agency deal with Washington. Let's see if Chris can get aboard. Obviously the money was good and it was more than he was making last year uh, with Anaheim. But he did sign pretty quick. It, it was within a month after being declared a free agent. He signed within a month of that with Washington for one year. So he must have been very happy a with the money and the fact that it was a good team. Now, I would think that's probably the bigger issue right. I mean, if, well, you, if you wait somebody else might. Sign to be that fifth guy. Exactly. You're looking a for an opportunity where you hopefully have a team that has a chance to win, and a good fit. And I, like I said, with all the other guys in this rotation, this is a good fit for him. You know, it's like we talked a little bit about Zimmerman last night, where he's kind of hiding in that third spot and not getting a lot of attention. He's going to start to. Same for this guy in the fourth slot. And how about that? He's breezing merrily along, and he walks Chris Medlin. With a three nothing lead. So Heron to the stretch for the first time tonight. Go figure. Guy that never walks anybody walks Medlin. Well I'm not going to say he was. Pitching scared because. <laughs> I got all over Medlin today and told him he needs to pick it up to be hang out with the rest of these boys in the pitching staff. This hitting's been atrocious. Maybe that's the start of a little two out lightning here. Rally starter. Roche in to talk to Heron. Behind him, he's probably going to play behind Medlin at first base. And Jordan Schaefer takes ball one. After showing bunt, Jordan takes a strike. Freddy Gonzalez has tried a whole lot of options out of the leadoff spot. He hasn't found a combination that clicks quite yet. Jordan one for 11 while batting first for the Braves. Anderson Simmons is hit up there. DJ e. Upton has hit there. Ramiro Pena's hit there. Jordan Schaefer with a 1 2 count. Backs away. 
two and two. When he does that, when he's ahead in the count, it's it's very effective. He's that pitch was 89. He's not doing it at 94, 95, but it serves the same purpose to try to get a left-handed hitter off the plate. That one off the glove of Ramos and Medlin moves up 90 feet. That's a pass ball. Now a full count for Jordan. Good call. Might have, might have been a backup slider or sinker that didn't sink. I'm going to guess the trying to backdoor slider after they'd come up and in on him with the fastball before. Swing and a miss. Schaefer down on strikes. Aaron has three strikeouts through three scoreless innings, and he leads 3 0. First two in the second and he trails three nothing in the fourth. Gretchen Caney looked it up for us Dan Heron when he gets a lead of three or more runs or actually is given three or more runs of support in his career he's 108 and 11. So the Braves are going to have to get some offense going the Nats got on the board with an RBI single from Steve Lombardozzi in the first inning after Span had doubled and went to third on a wild pitch. And then Span came through again. This was originally ruled a two run error. It's been changed to a two run double. So the runs were earned. Not sure I agree with that. But my phone didn't ring. Wilson Ramos leads off, swings the first pitch, the skies towards center. And Upton's got it. That's out number one. The other weird thing about the walk to Chris Medlin. It snapped a streak of 28 consecutive Braves hitters retired by the Washington Nationals. The real oddity of the game last night, it was the first major league game where neither team reached base from the fifth inning to the end of the game. That's how in command Jordan Zimmerman and Paul Mahalam were. The last 20 Braves were sent down in order in the 2 0 defeat in game three. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I don't, I, we certainly didn't, but I, I think for a lot of people, Paul Mahomes performance gets lost in the shuffle last night. He was really good. Saw him before the game and told him what a good job he did and said one mistake. Aaron 
bunted successfully his last time up. He swings and misses successfully here in the fourth inning. And Medlin has his second out. Friends, Major League Baseball and People Magazine are looking to salute our nation's veterans and military service members. 30 of them, one to represent each Major League Baseball team, will be recognized at the 2013 MLB All-Star Game in New York City. To nominate, go to tributeforheroes.com. Ball one to Denard Span. Two doubles, a run, and two RBIs for the Washington leadoff man tonight. Drive to right. That's going to hang up for Jordan, and he'll make the catch. First easy inning for Chris Medlin. He gets the Nationals in order: one, two, three, and two, three, and four. Coming up for Atlanta tonight at Turner Field. is brought to you by the Home Depot. Dan Heron stake to a 3 nothing lead. He has Chris Johnson here in the fourth. The Braves. And the night has turned rather nasty. I mean the wind has been blowing all evening long but now there's some mist. Beginning to come down at the ballpark. It's like a night in the old candlestick. The squibber back to the mound. Heron. Has no trouble. Johnson's 0 for 2. One out. That's exactly what it feels like when that fog used to come rolling in over the top of the roof. Right around 630, 640, the end of batting practice. Would start rolling in. I'm sure you guys missed the old San Francisco crab mascot. Worst of all time. <laughs> Bless his heart. Here's Justin Upton. And he yanks one foul past third. Strike one. Fans who could brave those temperatures at Candlestick Park were awarded the quad. I think it's how you pronounce it. Quad at Candlestick. Military badge. 
they would pin on their jackets July 42 degrees at night. Can't explain the weather, but this spring may be on pace to be the coldest ever recorded. Seasonably cool weather again here in Atlanta tonight. Two balls and a strike. Upton, another roller. Heron with a bare hand and an off balance throw makes the play. And it's a good play. Two outs. Been talking about the deception of his wind up and how it can throw your timing off. That looked like a cutter that he hit off the end of the bat. The strikeout is Schaefer last inning. This was his good split. See how that one goes down? Actually, that was a little higher than he probably would have liked it. But he's got good movement working tonight. It's paying off. Hot shot into right field. That's going to get down in front of Jason Worth. He cuts it off on the warning track. And Freddie Freeman has the first Braves hit. It comes here on the first pitch with two outs in the fourth inning. Braves fans, the Braves taking on the Mets this Friday, May the 3rd. Through the fifth, presented by Corona. Cheer on your Braves this weekend and don't miss Georgia Lottery Friday night fireworks, as well as kids run the bases on Sunday. Visit Braves.com slash tickets or call 800 745 3000 First hit for the Braves since the third inning last night when Paul Mahalam had his double. The reluctant double, as I coined it. Yes. Braves one swing away from getting back in this game and Evan Gaddis can hit him a long way six homers this year. He popped out to Denard Span in his second inning try. This remarkable rookie year for Evan Gaddis. Continued today when he earned the Rookie of the Month award. He didn't even know that there was such a thing. <laughs> That's part of what endears him to people is that he's just here to play baseball and enjoy himself. According to the press release, he will receive a specially designed trophy suitably engraved to commemorate his performance. Well, you would hope it would be suitably engraved, and you wouldn't want it. You know, to say Chip Carey on there. If it comes to that, we're in deep trouble. Downstairs, two balls in a strike. And here are the April honors announced for the game today. Well earned by both. Ball past Desmond and into left field. Back to back two out hits for the Braves. And now Dan Ugler comes up. Got that cutter up. Stayed up high in the zone. Gave him a chance to adjust to it. And yank it through the hole. Swing could tie this thing up. Ball one. Well, Aaron, he doesn't walk anybody, but he's given up plenty of home runs over the years. Old foul pass, Brian Snitker. Count evens at a ball and a strike. This year, Heron's given up six home runs in 28 innings. They got 31 in 2006, so a bunch of years with in the 20s. A 
to short. Desmond's got it. Lombardozzi at the second base bag. And that retires the side. The Braves threaten but fail to score against Dan Heron, who enjoys a 3 0 lead after four. For our Moe's Southwest Grill home wrecker home run. And for this, we go to State Mutual Stadium in Rome, Georgia. That's Brian McCann. And this is his third home run, part of his rehab stint. It was a game tying solo home run in the seventh. He caught eight innings. He took off in the ninth. And the Braves won it in the tenth in the first home run of the season from Blake Brown. So, congratulations to Randy Ingle's squad. Freddie Gonzalez is hoping to get his catcher back maybe as early as Monday or Tuesday in the Cincinnati series. That'll be great, Tom. Hope that's the case for Brian McCann. Little add on to that. He's one for four tonight. When that was being shut out, till he had an RBI single in the eighth tonight. Fifth inning. Chris Medley to work. Steve Lombardozzi is in the box and takes a called strike. Brian was here in Atlanta during this series, taking batting practice. Looked terrific. This one is looped toward short for an easy out. Lombardozzi is one for three. Brian looks trim. He looks ready to go. He said the shoulder feels great. His throwing has been very, very good. He's very excited about that as well. So looks like a chance we could have him with the club in Cincinnati when we start our next road trip. You can never have enough good players on your team. No, you can't. Harper has been aggressive early in the count and is again. Remember, he hurt his side trying to catch Tim Hudson's drive to right, which turned out to be a home run. Checked his swing last night. The side started barking. And he said today that the only time it hurts is when he swings the bat. He's not swinging like it hurts. No, he didn't swing like it hurt after after he hurt it last nope. night on that ball he hit, and he didn't he hadn't swung like it hurts tonight. Actually, I mean, it looked it hurt when he tried to take a pitch, so maybe he's just going to swing it everything. That's over the inside corner. He didn't swing, but is 0 for 3. Two quick outs. Here's our AT&T Universe trivia question. Davey Johnson's one of two active managers with seven or more 90 win seasons. Can you name the other man to do that? 
We'll let you think about the trivia question tonight as Jason Worth is out of the game. Roger Bernardino comes on to pinch hit here in the fifth. Jason must really be hurting. Whether it's the ankle or the hamstring. And he struck out back in the third inning. This is the foul ball off the ankle from O'Flaherty the other night. Direct shot right into the ankle bone. But when he struck out against Medlin here in the third, he didn't look comfortable at all. Bernardino skies one toward left. And Upton's got it. And that retires the side. Medlin starting to settle in. That was an eight pitch fifth inning. He's due up third for Atlanta, trailing three zip. Part five, the Home Depot. Time to get the Braves bats going here as we head on the fifth inning. Two to nothing. Three to nothing, I should say, as you score. Two hits. I meant to say for the Braves, as you see, Roger Bernardino stays in the game for Jason Worth in right field. Atlanta sends BJ up to Anderson Simmons and Chris Medlin up against Davey Johnson's Washington Nationals, who try to get out of town with a series split. Strike one up to a long fly ball foul. Hope you heard BJ's conversation with Tom Hart before the game. He, he feels that he's very close to breaking out for the Braves. There's that 0 2 count again, Chip. Ninety six at bats for Upton. He has struck out thirty four times. Well, he's a guy who strikes out, but that, that's even a high pace for him. And he knows that. That's why he just spends countless hours in the cage trying to get it worked out. Ball toward right. Bernardino will gather that in. One out. And time for Georgia Power Energy tip number six or the old Bobby Cox tip. You can save up to $300 annually by switching from a gas furnace to an energy efficient electric heat pump. If you make the switch before August 31st, you may qualify for up to a $400 rebate. 
Handleton grounded out to third, his first time up. Going back to last night's third inning and Paul Mahalam's double to Freddie Freeman's fourth inning single. As Rendon at the bag makes the peg, two outs. 35 straight Braves players had been retired. Position players, position players by the Washington staff. Aaron tonight, two hitting Atlanta in the fifth. Well, I mean, I think that's something that fans are going to have to get used to. This offense is going to have some peaks and valleys. You know, you're still going to show up most nights, liking your chances, but you're going to go through some ruts where hits, runs are at a premium, strikeouts are high. Popped up left side, Desmond going out, and he makes the catch. Nice range for Ian Desmond. And Herod has another one, two, three inning. On the go to the sixth. Three zip Washington. Night. New York has dropped six of its last seven ball games, but Matt Harvey is the talk of all of baseball. The New York flamethrower is a man we will see in the upcoming weekend series. How about John Buck, fellas? Mercy. Off to a great start. He was a candidate for player of the month for April. 27 RBIs already. So Delta Airlines tells us the Mets are on deck here in Atlanta tomorrow night 735 first pitch and fireworks to follow. Mike Miner and Sean Markham the scheduled starters. So there the David Wright's off to a good start too. Nice to see him healthy. He's been battling a bad neck for the Mets. New York. Here in Atlanta, as Desmond couldn't check his swing and his struck out. He'll argue about that. Fifth strikeout for Chris. Right coming off a three hit and a homer Wednesday against Miami. Desmond's got to be careful. He was upset with a call third strike in the first inning and had a couple of words for Mark Wagner and certainly didn't like that check swing call. Eight straight retired by Chris. Here's LaRoche. He missed his all but stopped. He's still blowing across the field toward the Washington dugout. The 
Chris has settled in. Got through the damage that he's been having to work through in the first couple of innings. Gave up three runs and gave up a couple of hard hit balls the last couple of innings, but they're at people. There's that two seamer. That's what he's been trying to figure out. And throw a good one to Harper to strike him out. Mm -hmm. Throw another good one there. Outside, two balls, two strikes. Tip the cap tonight to our center field cameraman, Ricky Lassiter and Wayne Perry. Ride them, Cowboys. The wind's blowing hard out there. Thought that was good enough. Didn't get the call. Three balls, two strikes. That's Chris Medlin like. LaRoche swings and misses. He's the last two pitches to LaRoche. And you know what? If we go. Here's the strikeout pitch. If we go back to the strike or the pitch before, look at the umpire, Mark Wegner. I think it's because Evan Gaddis is so enormous, but look how high he is. Look where his eyes are in terms of the top of the strike zone. And that was a pretty good pitch, but that's an awful long way to look down and try to gauge a pitch at the knees. Mm -hmm. well, that used to be uh, that used to be an issue with Javi sometimes, and umpires would tell him that he was too big and had a hard time seeing that low pitch. They had, you know, they're trying to get him to crouch down more, which <laughs> not an easy adjustment to make when you're not used to making it. But no, not with those ham hocks he had for legs. Mark's not the tallest guy among umpires, and you can understand him wanting to get a good look at the plate. But it looked like on that particular pitch, he was not in a good position to see. So I'm guessing guys the trade off for Carlson is you may not get the low strike but you may get both sides of the plate because he's right on top. Excuse me of Wegner. Because you're right on top of the catcher you can see inside and outside mm -hmm. corner. Well, that looked pretty good. They call the ball full count. This track agrees with him no. Three balls, two strikes. And Anthony Rendon might be his last big league game for Washington. Ryan Zimmerman expected to be back for the Nats tomorrow when they play the Pirates. Yeah, but I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of him, this guy. Still looks a little bit raw at the plate, but he's made some nice plays at third. And he takes that one back up the middle. His base hit back in the second inning was a nice piece of hitting behind in the count. Went to right field to get the runner over. Seeing some glimpses of why they drafted him number one in 2011. So a two hit night for the Nationals third baseman. Here's Ramos. He scored in the second inning and is also flying out to center. Three nothing Washington, sixth inning. Line to Simmons, and he'll flip to Dan Ugla, and that'll retire the side. Top of the order coming up for Atlanta. Got to get something going. Nationals still lead three zip.
time for tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Crude Coors Light. Division play. Braves handling everybody in the National League East so far at a 10 and 2 mark thanks to their good work against the Nationals of course going 5 and 1 against them. The Athletics are an odd team. They they're playing really well at home doing well within their division but on the road not so good. Schaefer shows bunt lays down a beauty Rendon sniffs it out fires a bullet to first. And gets his man easily for the first out. Again, he's getting his money's worth if this is his last game that's our Zaxby's indescribably good play nice bare handed pickup. Not a bad bunt either. No he's playing in. You see Jordan square around just a touch later. Strike one to Chris Johnson, who has struck out and bounced back to the mound. Aaron's gotten an early lead and has looked very, very crisp tonight. So two hits, his fourth inning singles. Johnson a fly ball to right Bernardino. Has that for the second out. I like tonight where you have Dan Heron with all of his pitches and the wind blowing in. A lot of fun, huh? Yeah, look, he's doing a good job making him hit the ball on the ground. When they do hit it in the air, he's had him hit it to the Center of the field, which is always a good thing, and into that right center field gap where, like we've talked with that win, the ball's not going anywhere over there, especially for a right hander. Strike one to Justin Upton. Roche will have room and foul ground. He's got that. Three up, three down in the Braves' sixth inning. Part 5, the Home Depot. 
Dan Heron will go to work first for the Nationals as we've hit the seventh inning already. Heron trying to put together back to back winning assignments for the Nationals. They beat the Reds last time out. He's up 3 0 tonight in the fourth game of the series. Chris Medlin's pitched well of late. He's retired 10 of the last 11 Nats he's faced. One ball, two strikes. Struck out. One down in the top of the seventh inning. Time for our Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard Active Leaders in Wins in the Major Leagues. We saw some history here in this series with Tim Hudson getting number 200. Yeah, it was a fun night and, you know, a big milestone for Huddy. And you, know, you see there, uh, only Halliday and Pettit among active guys ahead of him. So he's in good company there and good company in the history of the game. He's only the 110th guy to do it. So. Nice going, Huddy. This is Denard Span, and that's a strike. One of the big questions, Tommy and Joe, around baseball is have we seen the last of the 300 game winners? And in the case of Tim Hudson, he gets to 240, 250 wins. Is a win total like that going to be this era of baseball's 300 win total? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, I hate saying, well, we're never going to see another 300 game winner. I mean, it, that's, that's, that's just too big a statement. Probably not likely, but I don't know that we'll. I don't want to go as far as to say never, but you know, 250 becoming the new 300. It might be in terms of being that measuring stick for starting pitchers. I mean, it's just it's hard to get to 300. I mean, it's hard to get to. It's been a topic of conversation among so many people in baseball now, and, and you know, when you really start to look at it and really look at how hard it is to win 200 games nowadays, you know that that 250 number is going to be. A really special number before too long. That's a little tight to the art span. You know, Bill LaJoy, when he was the general manager of the Tigers, said that he paid pitchers for one stat wins. But the way the game is pitched now, as you're saying, the specialization of our sport wins are, I would imagine, even tougher for starting pitchers to come by these days. Well, they, they are. I mean, I look, I mean, I mean, we used to have that discussion all the time, and I remember Greg Maddox saying all that all the time. That look, starting pitchers, you're paid to win. That's what matters. ERA doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. You're paid to win games, and that's true. That's the measuring stick for starting pitchers. But again, that that win day in and day out, every five days, is getting harder and harder to achieve. You know, and, and it's like we've talked about. We start looking at 200 wins, 250, 300. You know, in, in in my heyday, I was making 36, 35 starts every year. These guys aren't doing that anymore. Uh, you know, you were pitching into the seventh or eighth inning because you didn't want your relievers in those innings. Nowadays, most teams are made up where they want those guys in the game. So those opportunities. As you see, Span Span draws a walk there. Those opportunities, not only to go out there and pitch enough times during the course of the year are being diminished. Then those opportunities to win games on the back end of a game where it's a, a tie game or a one run game in the sixth inning. Those are starting to be diminished because quite honestly like I've said many a times I got a 2 2 game and my pitcher starting pitchers getting ready to go out there and flip the lineup for the fourth time. Would I rather send him out there or let's just look at the Braves case or do I and I'm Freddie Gonzalez. Do I want to start going with a flaherty Venters, Kimbrell, whoever else is out there. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's like you're a, you're a kid with a bunch of toys to play with, and it's awful hard not to go to those toys down in the bullpen. But I would say, too, that with respect to how hard it is in this discussion to get wins more so than it was when you first started, once you get to those guys that are specialists in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, the uh, the odds of losing a lead become much greater. I don't care how good they are, if they've got to cover three innings. If you had the lead when you left, there's a real much better chance of you losing the lead, in my opinion, over those three games than if you were still pitching. 
Sure. The now, starter was still pitching. I, I agree. I mean, look, I, if you look, if I were to look at my career, um, how many more wins could I have had? Had you not had the blown save and all those things? I don't. I don't know the answer to that. But the flip side is, you then have to figure out, well, how many games did I end up winning where I was left in the game in the seventh inning in a tie game or, or things of that nature. So I, I don't know if it balances out or not. But I, to your point, you're right. There's that side of it, it. I would imagine, in most cases, is probably better. But again, it's almost like you're taking the mound as a starting pitcher now, like you do in a spring training game, and you know, all right, I got six innings to get to get my work in yes. and get it done. You yes, know? that's right. And and I'm not casting aspersions at all on anybody in the Braves bullpen because it is head and shoulders the best in baseball. But the old adage of hey you keep going down there enough you're going to find somebody that's not on tonight. Mm -hmm. 2 and 0 oh to Lombardozzi and I'm saying that as a general rule. Sorry to interrupt you Chip but. Uh, the 250. Being comparable to the old 300 level. I think what Tim Hudson's win did to me the other night was make me appreciate. Back to back walks from Chris Medlin. And they come with one out as you saw the Braves bullpens busy with Anthony Varvaro loosening quickly. It just made me appreciate that much more. You guys who won 300 games and you won 305. Mm -hmm. Maddox won 355 or something like that. Right. I mean, that's 155 more wins than Tim Hudson has. And you know how good Tim is. It's just a great appreciation for the. Uh, longevity you guys had and the sustained sustained success you had over a long period of time. Bryce Harper hits with two on and one out. And a little squibber in front of the plate. Gaddis pounces and fires to first in time. That's the second out. And it leads to another fascinating question, which is as we know, our game is based upon numbers and historical performances, and players in this era are compared to players who pitched 20, 30, 40 years ago. How in the world can you make a Hall of Fame case for using Tim Hudson as an example if he has 230 wins versus you and your 305? Well, I, I think that that's a good question, a good discussion, and I think it makes you start to think and maybe realize that, you know, it's hard to compare errors. It's hard to compare one guy to the next from 40 years ago, or, you know, you, you really have to compare, you have to look at guys' body of work and the era in which they played. And, you know, if you want to have that discussion about Mickey Mantle and Chipper Jones, then you know what? Here's what I would say. Mickey Mantle, if he played today, would be a good, really good player. If Chipper, Chipper Jones played 50 years ago, he would be a really good player. I mean, I think that's the way I look at it, and, it, and it's tougher to compare what they did in their errors. Because the game changes so much. You know, like we talked about the other day. You know, I've had, I remember having discussions with Tom Seaver talking about how he would look at a lineup and know that, Seventh, eighth, and ninth hitters. There was six to nine strikeouts every time he pitched. You can't do that anymore with the lineups the way they are nowadays. Strike three to Bernardino. Chris Medlin pitches around a couple of walks and sends this game to the seventh inning stretch. That was good discussion. That was fun. Let's get some offense. Three nothing Atlanta trailing the Nationals.
about the seventh. You guys were talking about Chipper Jones versus Mickey Mantle. How about Chipper Jones versus the Phillies? Time for our SunTrust shining moment. This was a year ago today, and Chipper capped the highest scoring extra inning game in the National League. Well, since the Braves beat the Mets on July 4th of 1985. This was the first of two walk-offs against the Phillies. His second came on September 2nd. Guys, remember how wild this game was? We wouldn't even been at that point if it wasn't for Brian McCann's grand slam and Jason Hayward coming off the bench with a key pinch hit double. Fun day at the ballpark. Weren't the Braves behind five or six to nothing in that game against Roy Halladay? Yeah, that was. I was going to say, that was the Halladay game as Freeman swings the first pitch and rolls out to first. That game may have started the struggles that have continued on into 2013 for the Phillies right here. Boy, holiday. But no struggles for that man, Dan Heron. Look at that. 58 pitches with one out in this Atlanta seventh inning. Four innings, but eight pitches or less. Well, it's, you know, this is kind of a perfect storm for him, and we've talked about how good his control is. He knows the Braves are aggressive. He's good enough to throw pitches that they're looking for in places they can't hit them. You know, and and and, and often in a lot of cases, like we were talking about uh, Upton's at bat last inning, there was that little cutter that looks like a fastball. You commit to it. Next thing you know, it's on the very far end of the bat instead of on the barrel, and it's a nice little pop-up. He's good enough to do that. That's about that pitch right there is about the biggest break you'll see from any pitch he throws. Most everything else is just a, a couple of inches, like with the cutter or with the sink from his split. Just enough to mess with your head. High fly ball to center. But the wind will. Make it easy for Span to make the grab, and he does. Two outs. All season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Joe Simpson, Tom Glavin, Tom Hart, Chip Carey from Turner Field. It's late at Washington trying to escape with a four game series split. Balls, no strikes. Delta Airlines, a proud sponsor of the Atlanta Braves. We're back on our Delta Charter Sunday afternoon when the Braves hit the road to Cincinnati, then San Francisco for four and Arizona for three. Back here at Turner Field after the Mets series, May 17th for the Dodgers. Seems like we just got home, right? See, so wouldn't it have been better that last trip you went to Cincinnati? Instead of Colorado on this trip you're going to Colorado instead of Cincinnati. That's just that's it. That's it. You're in charge of the schedule next year. <laughs> I don't want that job. <laughs> so now we have the president <laughs> and vice president of common sense. <laughs> we got snowed out in Kansas City today. You can believe that. Looks like the guys are having a lot of fun. On the tarp on the. Field too, doing a little snow slip and slide, if you want to call it that, on the ice. Swing and a drive, deep left field, and the Braves are on the board. That ought to fire up the troops. Something he had to reach for. Dan's fifth homer. Aaron was. Real eager to get the next baseball and fire quickly to BJ Upton. BJ stepped out and made him wait, and then Harry missed high with ball one. Popped up. 
LaRoche and Lombardozzi. It'll be Lombardozzi at second base, and that'll retire the side. Heron's shutout bid ends with the mighty swing of Dan Ugla. His fifth home run makes it a 3-1 game after seven. And now we head to the top of the eighth inning with five, six, seven hitters up for the Nationals. And as you can see, we have a new pitcher on the mound. It's Corey Guerin who answers the AT&T calls for bullpen. His first work in this series, his ERA at 146, he gave up two runs, his first of the year in his last time out against Detroit. Desmond has doubled and has struck out twice. I think especially when you see someone in a play in a four game series and they're in there in there every day every at bat. You find out a lot about them and. I like it more than I did when the series started. Two balls, two strikes. We talked to people around their ball club about how he has emerged as a leader on this team. And he demonstrates it. Desmond was drafted in 2004, a third round pick when this franchise was still based in Montreal. So he was an Expos draft pick. Where's he from? Sarasota, Florida. He's going to play college ball at the University of South Florida before the Expo signed him. He was the 84th pick in the 04 draft. And he's down on strikes for a third time tonight and asks if that one was a strike. And the answer is yes. As he heads back to the dugout, we'll take a look at the freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. This ball hit off the end of the bat by Denard Spann with two out in the second inning. Got Chris Johnson a little bit in between in terms of trying to get in front of it or just glove it and whiffed on it. Came up empty. Two runs scored, and right now that's the difference in the game. It was originally ruled an error, changed to a double. So 
that added to Chris Medlin's earned runs tonight. Seven innings, three earned runs. But Chris did strike out eight and walked three. Needs the bullpen to shut him down and the offense to get going as Adam grounds to short. Hamilton will have plenty of time to get the Nationals first baseman Adam LaRoche two outs. Braves bullpen has been nothing shy of spectacular this year. Joe said it earlier it's head and shoulders the best in baseball. They came in with a 199 bullpen ERA this evening. Yeah and it's not just uh, uh, Craig Kimbrell and it's not really even just Eric O'Flaherty who's also been dynamite. It's everybody. Yeah, it's been everybody. It's not like you say you, you, you tend to focus on the three on the back end because you know those are generally who's out there when you're winning games. Right. But it's these other guys too that when they've come in in these situations to hold the score and whatever they've been doing a great job as well. And remember it's a bullpen without Johnny Venters. It's a bullpen without Christian Martinez. Both of them are sidelined. That's pretty pretty spectacular right there. Especially the role to me that Luis Avilan has been placed in to try to fill the void of Johnny Venters. Just great work. Johnny's been playing catch around 60 feet says the elbows feeling great. Yeah. I asked him about um, the day after he had had his. Workout playing catch and he said it felt just terrific. He was very encouraged. Johnny had that. Uh, platelet rich plasma injection I believe is how it's described in the elbow. So it's hopeful he'll be back. For Atlanta Christian Martinez. Had some discomfort. Is still another week or so away from beginning his throwing program for the Braves. In the meantime, those filling in have been outstanding. As Rendon looks inside at a 2 2 pitch. Now it's 3 and 2. I'm thinking of having one of those platelet rich plasma injections. Yeah? Yeah. For your golf game? No, just all over. All over? Yeah. I don't think we have enough platelets. <laughs> Outside, <laughs> two red zone, ball four. That worries me too. <laughs> so Rendon's had an impressive night at the plate. Two singles, a run scored, and now a two-out walk in the eighth. Here's Ramos. Ramos reached after. Dan Heron sacrifice. And Span doubled home two in the second inning. He's also fly to center and bounced out. One ball, one strike. Off the end of the bat, funny spin, and it stayed fair. And Freddie Freeman, right at the bag, makes the unassisted put out. More good work by Corey Guerin. The eight, nine, and one spots are up for the Braves, who are down now by two.
3-1 now in the eighth. Unfortunately, it looks a lot like last night's box score. Those two singles by Freeman and Gaddis came back to back with two out in the fourth. And then Ugla with the two out homer in the seventh. Got to put a few of those hits together here to come back. Hamilton Simmons gets things started for the Braves. Aaron has thrown 70 pitches through seven innings. He's gotten Andrelton to ground out to third twice. And he gets a pop fly foul over the Braves dugout and quickly nothing in two. He walked Medlin with two out in the third inning. But in a 3 2 count to Ugla that turned into a homer, but well, he hadn't even been behind in the count all night. No. That's what I said. I mean, I think it's a combination of the Braves hitters know he throws strikes. They're going up aggressive. He knows they're being aggressive, and, and it's that cat and mouse game of who can execute. And when he's been in the strike zone, he hasn't, you know, other than the ugly home run, he hasn't been in the heart of the strike zone. Nineteen thousand eight hundred six. The crowd at Turner Field tonight, hoping for a late inning comeback. Broken bat, left side of the infield. Desmond charges, gloves, guns, and got him by a quarter step. Hamilton thought he beat the rap at first, but he's out number one. Well, there's a little bit more of your appreciation factor right there. No argument from Terry Pendleton. That's usually the guy I look at right away on a close one. Well, good stretch by LaRoche, but I, I'm not sure here. I think he beat it. Foot. I think he did too. Bang, bang, call goes Washington's way. Reed Johnson grabs bat, pinch hits. Just get somebody on and take chances. Reed looking for his first pinch hit of the year. He's 0 for 8 off the Braves bench. He's going to have to go through the heart of the order one more time. You'd like it to be this inning. Start a Samba line. Some activity for the first time tonight in their bullpen. Drew Storen begins to play catch. It's kind of like we talked last night. Please bring anybody in from out there. Oh. Braves beat up on Washington's bullpen up at Nationals Park. The last couple of weeks, though, that group collectively has been a whole lot more effective. So they're settling in too. Yeah, they have, and it, that wasn't so much a knock on on their work as much as it is a compliment to the starting pitchers the last two nights. Zimmerman last night. Aaron tonight. They've really picked up Gio Gonzalez and Steven Strasburg, whom were beaten by the Braves in the first two games here in Atlanta. Strasburg had some forearm tightness. He says he's good to go for his next start. That should be tomorrow night, right? Uh, no, one more night. No. Oh, Detweiler yeah, tomorrow. Detweiler, that's right. Yeah. Seen yet. Detweiler and A.J. Burnett tomorrow in Pittsburgh. That'll be a whale of a matchup. Strasburg and Jeff Locke Saturday. Gonzalez and Wandy Rodriguez Sunday. And there's that first pinch hit for Reed Johnson. He went down and golfed that baby. Right up the middle. Foul one off like this earlier up into the seats. That was not a strike. But guarding the plate, really stand right up on top of the plate, too. He wasn't going to give in. Kind of combed that one so up the middle. Professional at bat right there. Yes, it was. So maybe that conga line that Joe was calling for is underway. Here's Schaefer. Jordan's over three. I believe it was Samba. To help my ear. One ball, no strikes. And the 
world of ballroom dancing, it's pretty similar. <laughs> Chan taught me that. Braves have five outs left. Down two runs. Huge swing game for the Nationals. Schaefer tried to bunt, and that's rolled foul. One ball, two strikes. Tried to bunt last time, and Rendon made a fine play at third to get him at first. I don't like that there. I don't like trying that in that count because if you're unsuccessful, now you're in the hole one and two. If you're going to try to push a bunt or drag a bunt, do it on the first pitch, do it when you're ahead one and oh, even two and oh if you want, but not when you're even in the count, moving the count to two strikes. Just foul that ball off. I mean, by the slimmest of margins. For him on the right side, Heron's going to do everything he can to prevent him from pulling the ball through that hole. Well, that's a nice stop. Two balls, two strikes. With Heron having a lot of confidence in his split finger pitch and it being an out pitch for him. He's also got to have a lot of confidence in his catcher and when he throws one like that even if the hitter were to chase it he knows his catcher can stop it. Good play. Two and two. Fly ball well hit towards center but playable for Spain. He's got it. Back to first is Reed Johnson with two outs and Chris Johnson coming up. And save big on your next Braves game with the Chevron value plan for just $69. You'll get four tickets, four hot dogs, four Cokes, a parking pass, game program, and a $10 Chevron promo card. Savings of over $50. Visit Braves.com slash value today. 86 pitches for Dan Heron. It's Davey Johnson coming to the mound, not Steve McCaddy here. This spot due up first in the top of the ninth inning. Likely his last inning. Turn it over to Soriano in the bottom of the ninth if the lead holds up for the Nationals. He probably just wanted to hear for himself that Heron was all right to finish the inning. You know, Chris would love a redeemer, huh? Yeah, he would. He represents the tying run with two outs. And a strike at the knees. Nothing in one. Johnson not sure about that. Said it was right at the bottom of the zone. That seemed like a similar pitch that was called a ball earlier tonight mm -hmm. on LaRoche. Ball one strike. A cue shot foul passed first. And now Chris and the Braves down to their last strike in the eighth inning. We've seen that several times tonight from right handed hitters. And one of them was Chris, and the other was Justin, a little that wound up being comebackers, a little right off the end right. of the bat. And that was the same pitch that he got those comebackers on, something that just moving a little bit off the end of the right handers' bats. Look like they were trying to pull the ball. Swing and a miss. And that retires the side. Boy, a masterful performance by Dan Heron tonight. He allows a run on four hits after eight innings, and he leaves with a 3 1 lead.
that'll give us a chance to give you our Chevron upcoming starters and here are our upcoming starters for the Mets series game one Sean Markham for the Mets lost in relief the other night in that marathon game down in Miami and Mike Miner as I think we've said about our last two pitchers anyway coming off a tough start out in Detroit looking to bounce back from that and bounce back the way Medlin and Mahalam did but hope they have a little bit better success. Mets are off tonight. They'll come into town 11 and 15 on the year at the moment five and a half games behind the Braves in the East. So tonight is done for Dan Heron eight innings of one run baseball. Jordan Walden takes over on the mound for the Braves. He's the third pitcher to work for Atlanta tonight. And Tracy Span and Lombardozzi up for the Nationals. Jordan Walden has been impressive a that he continues to throw strikes he hasn't walked a batter and b this change up that suddenly really become effective for him to left handed hitters boy stay hot with that it's been great. Ninety seven and off Gattis's glove and back to the screen. He started the first two games of this series for the Nationals, played thir third base, has a couple of hits here in Atlanta, including an RBI. And he was blown away with a 96 mile an hour fastball, one away in the ninth. Back to our AT&T Uber's trivia question. Davey Johnson last night won his 1300th game as a big league manager and is one of two active with seven or more 90 win managerial seasons. Can you name the other. OK we may not have the answer. Right now I want to ask you guys I want to discuss this with you, with you real quick. OK. So I got some nominees. Some guys that may not quite have that many. Look at Denard Span just flipped the bat out. And a big turnaround first, and he's going to take second after the ball got behind Justin Upton. That's a single and an error on the Braves' left fielder. Probably wouldn't have been ruled an error except that Span stopped halfway and was about to go back right here. And then when he saw the ball spin by Justin, who was trying to prevent the double, he kept going. Some nominees though on the managerial thing on Garden Hire. Not sure he's got that many. Mike Sosha, Terry Francona, Jim Leland, Joe Madden. Lavardozzi rips one foul back. Buck Showalter, Bruce Bochi, Bruce Bochi, Dusty Baker. Baker. Mm -hmm. I really like Baker and Leland, but. Well, why do we cover our bases? We can call it a team win, you know. <laughs> it's maybe one of those guys would be our guess, huh? I'm going with Leland. That's the first guy that jumped out at me. I'm going Baker. I'll go Dusty Baker. And I will go Bruce Boshi. And all of Braves Country on the edge of their sofas with anticipation as Lombardozzi awaits a 1 1 pitch. So here we go. Who is the genius tonight? Oh. Dusty Baker. Hello again, everybody. And it's the Giants, of course. As Lombardozzi's down on strikes. Gannis will make the pick first. Great success with the Cubs and now doing it again with the Cincinnati Reds. Well, don't forget the Giants. And that 103 win season that was. Thanks for coming. Yeah, just a second place finish. Hang with them. Also won 90 games in 97. 97 games in 2000 with the Giants. Followed by 90 and 95. So five seasons with the Giants. 
Sorry, Chip. None with the Cubs. And two with the Reds, including 97 wins last year. His highest win total with the Cubs, Chip? 89. Is that the 03 year? That was 04. 04. The year before that, 88. We don't like to talk about 03 too much. Bryce Harper takes a little low. And span back to first. Two balls, no strikes. That was, of course, the infamous Bartman ball year. Bryce Harper in for a fifth at bat with that sore side. He has swung early in the count tonight. He is 0 for 4. And now the Braves will take the bat out of his hands and walk him. And they'll go after Roger Bernardino, who checked in for Jason Worth. Worth played the field, had two at bats tonight, and left before Bernardino came on to pinch hit for him in the fifth inning. Two on, two out. Here's Bernardino. That is a huge run at second base. Especially with the heart of the order coming up for the Braves. Yeah, you want to stay in that bloop and a blast mode right now. But three run lead. A little bit steeper hill to climb. Breaking ball to Bernardino. Strike one. Good pitch there. A guy hasn't had much success, hasn't been hitting much. Runners in scoring position. You know he's looking fastball. Nice play, Gaddis. One ball, one strike. Straight back. Got away with a high fastball there. And if that changeup, he's feeling as good about it tonight as he has been, it might be a good time for it. And the dirt. Two and two. Washington three for ten tonight with runners in scoring position. And here's where Mr. Walton wants action. Two balls, two strikes. And he missed for a count. So now two fast runners will get a head start with a payoff pitch. He took a shot with the breaking ball on 2 2. Do you do it again on 3 and 2? Runners go. Swing and a miss off speed. There's the change. And Walden sparkles in the top of the ninth inning. Upton, Freeman, and Gaddis coming up for the Braves as we go to the bottom of the ninth.
by Ram Trucks and by AT&T. Nineteen thousand plus still with us in Atlanta. The Braves not dead yet. They've got three outs to get a couple of runs and at least tie this game up, and they'll take aim at former Brave Rafael Soriano, who's now the Nationals' closer. 27 ERA, so he's given up a few runs, but last night he was very good. Two ground outs and a call third strike. Well, it's a very similar situation. He had a two run lead. Can't afford to let anybody get on at this stage of the lineup for fear of bringing up the tying run. Tip your cap to Dan Heron. Eight innings, 90 pitches, four hits, one run, one walk. That was to Chris Medlin. He struck out four, and the only run was Dan Ugly's solo home run that came in the Braves' seventh. But unlike last night, Joe Soriano's got a different part of the lineup. He's got the, the big boppers, three, four, and five. Yeah, last night he had nine, one, two. Trying to get somebody on in front of Justin. Now Justin needs to get on. Side one ball, no strikes. We talked about Soriano last night, Tom, about how he predominantly his whole career been fastball slider, but after his time in New York, now all of a sudden he's got a cutter for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder where he got that from. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Mariano Rivera, of course. Bottom of the ninth inning, bottom of the nine o'clock hour. Graves down 3 1. And that caught a corner. Two balls and a strike. That's a good take. For something to drive and might have been a strike, but not something for Justin to go after. Now, right hand hitters, right now, you're not looking yeah. to drive the ball the other way. Nope. Two and two. Pitch of decision for Justin Upton. To short. Desmond on one hop. One out. There was that cutter. What a good swing on it, though. Yeah, but it went from the sweet spot to a little bit off the end. Freddie Freeman has one of the Braves four hits. That was a two out fourth inning single. Get a good pitch to hit. He, he's not that sharp with his four seamer. He's trying to air some out and they've been right around 90 91. It's not like he's been that overpowering with it. He can throw that four seamer over. Get the outside corner ball too. And yeah, up in the same way. It's one of those situations where Freddie, as much as he talks about how he doesn't look pitches, or he just tries to get in the box and react. I think this is a situation where if you're not going to look for a pitch, you better at least look for a location. 
you know, for a ball that you you can drive and not not put, not get yourself out. Right. If he were the tying run, I'd say green light here. He's not. Braves need a base runner. Bets are off now. Three and one the count. Well, if you're Soriano, it's, it's the reverse psychology. You're throw that same pitch. Make him hit a home run. So what if he does? You still you still have a one run lead. Yep. Bouncing ball up the middle. Lombardozzi to his right. Charges, fires, and gets Freeman for the second out. He had a long way to go to get to that ball, but got Freeman for out number two. Coming up on Braves Live, presented by at and we'll hear from the skipper, Freddy Gonzalez. We'll get sound from the locker room, and we will look at all of tonight's highlights. David Gannis, the final hope in the last of the ninth. He's one for three. Got to be ready. It's a weird wind up when he gets his sign, but Evan didn't have both hands on the bat when Soriano came up from that deep bend because he gets from there. See, Evan's not usually goes right from there to the pitch. The Nationals, the first team Gaddis has seen more than once in his young career. And we didn't see Soriano up in Washington, so. This is on the job training for Gaddis against the Nationals closer. Now it's one and one. Off the middle. Gaddis has two hits. And the Braves will bring the tying run to the plate here in the ninth. Waited nicely on that pitch. Cutter. Get it right back through the middle. Dan Uggla homered in the seventh. Can he keep the line moving in the ninth? He's had great luck against Soriano. Dan's number is amazing. Five hits in 13 at bats. Three of those five hits homers. A high strike. One ball, one strike to Dan. Borderline call, but he got it. You know, again, good take by Ugla. That's not a pitch you're going to do much with. Right. Good cut. And Dan and the Braves down to the last strike. Can Dan do this here in the ninth? He went out and covered that. What looked like a, a cutter. He moved away from, but he went out around it. Popped him up. Lombardozzi going out at second. Wynn tries to play tricks with that, but no such luck. The Washington Nationals come back and earn a four game series split and beat the Braves in back to back nights. 3 1 tonight's final. And we're back to recap it for you after this from Turner Field.